I'm going to show you now how to use LT Spice and the Fast Fourier Transform to verify a Bode plot. So I have a sample file located here. Um, all you have to do is click on the link and cut and paste it. For an example, we have a notch filter that I found, uh, I believe it's from Analog Devices, uh, one of their app notes. And I'm just using uh, the universal op amp model. I also have a Laplace transform of a notch filter, although it's not exactly the same notch filter shown here, but it'll show you what you need to do for the project. So this should be, let's make sure that we're going to get a AC analysis. So let's just verify the Bode plot. And VY is the op amp based, and V double Y is the Laplace transform. I'm not quite sure why they don't match up. I just have a feeling that um, this transfer equation is not matching that, and that this was probably from Python. So while it's very easy to take a Bode plot and LT spice to actually measure it by going one frequency at a time, measuring the, the magnitude and the phase of the response and then plotting it can be time consuming, even if you're doing it in an automated fashion. We can use the fast Fourier transform to convert a time domain simulation into a frequency domain. So let's first. Now, I'm going to show you what I do kind of the first time I go through a simulation is uh, that notch filter should be about 60 hertz. So um, I'm just going to run the simulation for half a second. And I'm not going to uh, play with any of the values in here. And then we'll just run the simulation. And we can see that there's zero response because there's no pulse there. So um, what I'll do right here is actually make a mistake and go from zero to 20 volts with a rise time of 10 milli, fall time of 10 milli, and I just don't ever want it to come back down, so I'll put 100 seconds. And because I'm just doing the step response, I actually don't even have to put in a period. You can see that. Now let's run it again. And we can see VYY, the Laplace transform version, seems to follow what looks like a step response. But VY of the op amp, let me zoom in, it does something, but then it just clips at 5 volts. Well, that's because the, the power supply of these op amps is plus or minus 5 volts. So in this case, yeah, the step voltage was too high. Now I can use 1 because the gain of the filter should only be one. And we can see that V double Y, the, uh, the Laplace transform, is uh, different than V Y here. And although it's kind of showing somewhat of the same thing, we can see some ringing in the uh, V double Y response. So these two equations are um, implementations are not the same. So that's okay. Now, there is this odd little, I'm not quite sure what you call it. Let's just call it a hiccup. So let's just look at VX, the input. And we can see, oh, wait a second. This is actually acting like a ramp compared to the time that it takes for the filter re to respond. And right at that little um, discontinuity is causing a discontinuity here. 
So again, I was doing this kind of incorrectly so that you could see the effects because you will end up having to change the rise and fall times yourself. All right. So we rerun the simulation and we zoom in again. And still there's a something going on there that um, will make the FFT transformation not quite work. So I'll just reduce it further. And then when I zoom in, that, that looks pretty good. Because it just, it looks instantaneous compared to the rest of the simulation. And I also noticed that everything stops oscillating out at 100 uh, milliseconds. So I don't really have to simulate for 500, 500, really just 100 milliseconds should give me enough. And there's our two filters, transient responses. Now, in order to use the Fourier transform to find the step, you can't really use a step. You have to use the impulse response. And so in order to find that, what you actually do is take the derivative of the step, which in LT spice is just ddt vx, and then you take the derivative of the output. So I have these three behavioral sources right here. And the easiest way is just to click on them to plot. And we just get rid of everything else. And yeah, we can see that the derivative of that step, we have a number that goes up to 10 kilovolts. Uh, sometimes. What I've noticed in LT Spice, when it gets above a meg, this de this uh, the derivative, sometimes it stops working. So now to find the FFT, we go to View FFT. We have three waveforms right there. We'll just plot them out right now. We'll select all three, and we see. Uh, notch-like behavior. VDX really should be a constant. But again, it's not because we're taking the Fourier transform, which bandwidth limits it. So really, once we start getting into this region, it's, it's not accurate for our purposes. But so then let's look at VDY. And here we see a notch-like filter. But interestingly enough, the gain is not, doesn't approach 0 dB. Well, that's because we're not using a perfect impulse response. So the way around that is to just divide it by what we did have, which was V dx. And now looks pretty accurate. It goes to 10 to about you know, a little shy of 10 kilohertz looks pretty accurate let's look at the other let's add the other filter we can add a trace let's take the, just the purely um, transfer function and we can see we just zoom in and there we have the Bode plot of the notch filter with a step function, meaning this data, what you would, is that on your oscilloscope, you would measure these three things, then you could in Python read in that file, take the derivative, take the FFT, and then divide it. And 
get. This response. You can also, as you recall, you could read the data into LT Spice and manipulate it. This is a notch filter. You need to do basically all of this for your um, to find the Bode plot of the your PWM DAC filter. <laughs> 